On today's easy tip, we're gonna go over some basics with VS Code to make sure you have success when compiling Unified 2 for your 3D printer. Let's get to it. Now, before we dive into this, I want to make sure that it's clear that you should already have VS Code set up per the TH3D documentation. If you do not have it set up already, head over to vscode.th3dstudio.com and review the installation documentation. This documentation will tell you everything you need to know to get VS Code set up, along with Python and the Platform I.O. extension, which are all required to compile the Unified 2 firmware using VS Code. So the first thing to get started is I need to get a copy of the Unified 2 firmware. You can do that by visiting the Help Center on our website and going to Downloads. And you can see here Unified 2 has different categories for printer brands. And all these things we're going to talk about are applicable to every single version, no matter what printer you have or what board is in that printer. In this case, I'm just going to download a copy for the Ender 3 just for the purposes of this video. You're going to download a zip file, so go ahead and save that to your computer and then we're going to need to extract these files. Now this may take a little while to extract, there's a lot of tiny files, so I'm gonna let this go ahead and extract and then I'll come right back once it's done. As you can see here, my files are all extracted. Now if you just use the built-in Windows one, with the default, it's going to open it up and show you where it extracted everything too. On this particular machine, we've got a bunch of different folders, but the one we're concerned with is firmware. Every single Unified 2 package you download will have the folder called firmware in it and that's the one we want to open in VS Code. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up VS Code. I'm going to go to File, Open Folder. I'm gonna to go to my Downloads folder, which is where I extracted my firmware. If you extracted it somewhere else, you gotta to navigate to where you extracted the firmware. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that, double click Firmware, and then hit Select Folder. And just like that, the firmware is open and ready to be edited in VS Code right now. One thing I will point out, as you can see here, as I was starting up, there's these little spinning circles at the bottom. You want to let VS Code finish doing its indexing and updating before you start messing with code. But now that it's done, I can go ahead and go to Marlin, double click configuration.h, and now I can start setting this up for my particular printer. Now, where I see a lot of people having issues because they're not following the directions correctly is they don't open the correct folder. And I'll show you what that looks like. So let me go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to open it incorrectly now, which is what we see a lot of people doing, which is what prompted the making of this video. So let's say I go to open folder and I navigate to where I extracted it. I double click this and then I hit select folder. Well, it's not going to work because we didn't open the correct folder. The firmware folder contains other files that Platform IO references to figure out how to compile the software that we're working with and a bunch of other things to ensure that it actually works. If we open it at the wrong folder level, it's just not gonna work. You see, I don't have any options here for compilation or uploading or anything for Platform IO. The same thing happens if you drill down too far into the directory. So if I go ahead and open again, and I go to firmware, and let's just say I click Marlin for some reason. If you notice, when I clicked Marlin here, it actually updated the folder name right here. And if I now hit select folder, we're back in the same position we were in the previous wrong step demo. We don't have any options to compile the firmware. We can edit the files, but we're not gonna be able to compile. So if you find yourself in this predicament, make sure you actually open the folder correctly by clicking the firmware folder and don't click anything else in here. This should say firmware at the bottom here and then you can hit select folder and it will open the firmware up correctly. The next thing I want to go over, which is gonna be very quick, is uncommenting. A lot of people don't know what uncommenting is, even if we have information on what that means in the directions. So I'm just gonna show you really quick right here. So let's say I'm setting this firmware up for my Ender 3 and it's got the 422 board in it. All you need to do is delete the two forward slashes in front of the pound defined. That's it. If you do this, where you delete the pound sign, it's not gonna work. If you only get rid of one forward slash, it's not gonna work. Your code needs to look like this with a proper uncomment, meaning the letters are going to turn this pink color and then the variable itself is going to turn blue. That's how it should look if you do things correctly. If you do anything else other than what I've just shown, it's not going to work and it's not going to compile. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is troubleshooting. So 
In the previous step, I uncommented my printer board. So now I can go ahead and try to compile the firmware. Now, if you notice, this bottom terminal window pops up and it's gonna start getting the firmware compiled. If you notice though, there's also a tab here that says problems. And you can see it's displaying that there are errors here. You can completely ignore them. These are irrelevant to trying to troubleshoot if you do have a compile issue. If I go back to terminal here, you can see even though there's a bunch of problems where it's complaining about different properties and other syntaxes, it doesn't matter. What we're concerned with is at the end of the compile, if this says success or not. If this does not say success, you can scroll up in this window and you want to look for lines that have red text. You can ignore ones that are white or green or yellow. You can see there's some yellow ones here. They don't matter. What we want is this success at the bottom. And that means that it's successfully compiled. So if I go here in my PIO folder, I go to build, I go to my processor folder. You can see here we've successfully generated the bin file, which is what we put on the SD card to flash our printer. So I'm going to intentionally break something. Here. Let's try to mess up my E step line. So I'm going to uncomment that. And let's say I accidentally put a character there. Well, maybe I didn't notice it. Maybe I fat fingered it. Well, I just told it to compile and it's not going to successfully compile. You're going to see that it's going to start throwing errors because I accidentally put an extra character there. And you can see right there, big red failed. Don't ever come to here for trying to track down what the issue is. We want to go to the terminal window here. And if I look here, if we scroll up, it's like, oh, this doesn't really make any sense. Until you look here, default access steps per unit requires X, Y, Z, and E elements. So, okay, that's a steps per millimeter setting. Oh, I fat fingered an A right there. So if I go ahead and fix that and recompile, it's going to go ahead and compile correctly. So when you're trying to track down an issue where the firmware won't compile, completely ignore this problems tab. This tab is dead to you. You wanna be looking in the terminal window here to see what the actual cause for failure to compile is. And 99% of the time, the issue is going to be because you did something wrong in the configuration file. You need to go back and check to see what you messed up, whether it was uncommenting something wrong or adding an extra character somewhere. It's always going to be something in the code that you can track back to a change that was made. When we send the code out, we do test compiles on every single release. So we know it compiles. So that means if there's an error, 99% of the time, it's something that you did to the configuration file to make it fail. So just to recap, the three things you want to be mindful of when you're using Unify 2 with VS Code is opening the correct folder, uncommenting things correctly, and making sure you don't have anything extra that's accidentally typed in, and then also properly using the terminal window to determine what the actual problem is. Remember, we only care about the red lines of text that are in the terminal window. You can completely ignore the problems tab. It's not useful at all, and it's not relevant to troubleshooting a problem. So I hope this video was clear and concise and helps you get Unified 2 compiled with VS Code for your 3D printer. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy printing.